In today's video, we survived 100 days of Minecraft, except there's two of us. Let's get you guys accustomed. This is my friend Oweka, and he doesn't play Minecraft survival very often, so hardcore mode is gonna be an interesting one. If one of us gives up on the challenge, the challenge is then over. A couple goals for this video is to discover everything the 1.20 update has to offer, make a house using the new block, and finally beat the Ender Dragon. Can we pull this off without giving up? Watch till the end to find out. Also, every subscriber I get for this video, I will be placing one TNT on a Weka's Minecraft house. So make sure to hit that button. Let's get on to the video. Days 1 to 5. I spawn into a brand new Minecraft 1.20 hardcore world, spawning into a flipping snow biome. Not a lot of resources here, but honestly, we explored a little bit. It didn't take very long before we realized that the snow was actually sinking. We also found ourselves a goat around the top of the mountain, and we ended up killing it, because the Weka thought it dropped us food. I don't think goats drop food. We ended up exploring a little bit, because we wanted to see what kind of resources were here in the first place. It didn't take us long to leave the mountain biome, but we ended up finding a ravine. Did we want to go inside? Not really, but it did look pretty cool. Then after a bit more exploring, we ended up finding a village, and this is really good because it gave us a source of food, hay bales. And there was a whole bunch of it, enough for both me and Aweka. This also gave us access to beds, and the reason why that's important is so we could sleep off the night and increase our chances of surviving. An interesting thing about this village is the fact that it was abandoned. There's a bunch of cobwebs and a bunch of zombie villagers that already existed. I think these are called abandoned villages. I think the first goal I wanted to tackle is finding ourselves a nice place to base and that's probably gonna be the bamboo jungle so after fully looting up this village we began exploring in one direction i also ended up crafting all of the wheat that we had into bread that way we can actually eat it after a bunch of exploring we ended up in a bunch of different biomes but the place that we finally landed at was this dark oak biome this biome is also notorious for having mobs in it because the trees literally cover up the land causing the mobs to be able to spawn in here but despite that being the fact we ended up finding ourselves a jungle biome and the one with actual bamboo in it a lot more than i honestly expected because i expected a jungle to not have that much at first we were a little bit confused and ended up having to search up how to actually get ourselves the new bamboo planks but essentially oweka also doubted me but this is how it goes you would take a bunch of bamboo and put it into a crafting table making yourself a bamboo stem i don't know if that's exactly what it's called but afterwards you put that back into the crafting table and then you got yourself some bamboo planks and it's all made out of bamboo it's a pretty nice thing i and ended up making a door with it and I also went mining for some stone tools for both me and Oweka. I also decided to beat some animals to death and by animals I mean fish but then also continued making the bamboo house. Oweka on the other hand decided it would be best to actually invest our bamboo in something a little bit more lucrative. Bamboo boats! Now they do look cool but we don't need like 20 boats. I, I don't know what he's doing. I honestly think he's trying to mess with us. I'm not too sure but then again he doesn't play this very often so. A cool thing about these bamboo boats is you could actually now place chests on them and they kind of look like a raft we end up taking these boats and exploring a little bit me taking the one with the chest and oweka taking the one without the chest and he got a little bit jealous as you can see here days 5 to 15 but after a bunch of following the river down to this big ocean we ended up finding ourselves a shipwreck and this is where we uncovered the second thing that this minecraft 1.20 update has to offer us templates now for those that don't know in this version of minecraft if you have yourself a template you can actually trim armor that's right you can add a design to it and a different color to it making over i believe 1600 different customizations to it i could be wrong on the numbers so just don't search it up all right just for my sake but after we found that we then started looking around for another one i was also in hopes to find ourselves a sniffer egg but honestly we had no luck with that so we ended up heading back to our sweet bamboo base me and oweka had an interesting idea why don't we do an archaeology challenge because that's also another thing that this version of minecraft gives us so basically the person to get the most from the archaeology i think it's called suspicious sand at the end of the video wins a hundred dollars and it gets sent to the winner of the challenge from the other person so we began to start exploring again we're honestly skipping a bunch of like the mining and stuff because we just want to see these new updates so we end up in search for a desert because there happens to be an interesting place you can find this stuff so as to my knowledge at that time i only knew we can find them in desert wells so we began searching for a desert well we found a few 
desert villages but really didn't loot into them because we saw that there wasn't any suspicious sand in them but eventually we ended up finding ourselves a desert temple that was pretty well hidden i'm not gonna lie we ended up going into that desert temple and we found a little bit of sand on the side when we mined into it lo and behold we found ourselves the suspicious sand we were looking for all along we found a few of them but i genuinely think aweka broke one of them which is really unfortunate we also ended up getting an emerald for ourselves which is probably the most valuable thing i got from this thing and aweka ended up getting a diamond all right minecraft i see the type of bias you're working with here i am not losing a hundred dollars to aweka so after spending all that time actually transporting between the places we ended up going on a bit of a mining trip and got ourselves ironed out simply put despite how much we explore at the end of the day it'll still be risky ventures if we don't have some sort of armor so we were also in search for a bunch of diamonds if you guys didn't know in this version of minecraft diamonds don't spawn out in the open in veins of four they actually spawn in veins of one unless they are covered or underground and a way to bypass this is simply put if you find an underwater cave the chances of you finding diamonds out in the open is so much higher and they're often like four or five veins and that was the main strat that i was betting all my money on me and aweka we ended up finding this really big cavern and he ends up finding a bit of an underwater area which led to us getting a bunch of diamonds but not enough for a full set so we had to keep going we ended up going into a dead end a couple of them even and found ourselves a gulk area and if you guys didn't know this is where you summon the warden so we accidentally ended up summoning the warden when trying to get through it and we did not engage but it was coming really close to us so we ended up building upwards after continuing down that area we also found ourselves at a mine shaft this thing was gigantic but it was also burning down oweka found a couple one-off diamonds there and he was also doing a lot of risky ventures as if we both don't lose the challenge if one of us dies i don't know why he's playing these type of games days 15 to 20 we ended up getting quite a bit of diamonds probably enough for the both of us but i think oweka got a little bit more than me which is fine because why would we even need that much in the first place but then again the armor piercing with diamond colors might look actually pretty nice but despite all of that we ended up getting out of the cave and ended up exploring a bit because honestly i grew out of the bamboo hut all right it's not that nice okay it's an okay house at best so we ended up exploring and we found ourselves the brand new biome and this biome is known as the cherry blossom biome now this biome is actually really interesting it's pretty pink if you couldn't tell but we ended up deciding this is the place we're going to be making the final house of this 100 days at so i got the chopping days 20 to 30 after a bunch of chopping we decided to finally start building the house i was the builder of the group because oweka didn't really have many building skills but that's okay he can just sit there and uh, do whatever oweka does on a day-to-day -day basis i don't know and after a whole bunch of building this very common complex house that's definitely not the shape of an L if you look at it from the top is done the pink house it's amazing I know but after finally finishing this house we also decided to start trimming a bit of our armor since we now have stuff for armor you know if you really think about it armor trimming is kind of like getting a haircut at a barber shop in GTA but for armor of course oh, nobody else thinks that I only really had one piece of iron armor and I decided to use it on that to see what it would look like and I decided to use an emerald as the color and it ended up looking like this honestly I really like these armor designs I'm really curious to see what it looks like with a diamond set of armor and a netherite set of armor because I definitely want some netherite before the end of this challenge. Phase 30 to 40. During this duration of time, we also ended up going on another mining trip and got ourselves a full set of diamond armor. Despite all of that, Oweka ended up spending some of the diamonds that he got on a diamond pickaxe, which is lucky because I don't have any diamonds anymore. And we ended up searching for a lava pool to make ourselves a nether portal. And I let Oweka do it this time around because, you know, he's obviously a professional at this game. Come on now. After a bunch of walking around we found ourselves a bastion and we got hella gold blocks out of it we also ended up killing a bunch of endermen for ender pearls using this boat trick that i showed oweka we also find ourselves a nether castle and end up getting a bunch of blaze rods and also kind of close into my death a little bit but that's okay we also ended up exchanging a bunch of that gold for some ender pearls from piglins in the midst of it oweka also did kind of jump into there and almost get killed so we had to be very careful on how we go about this luckily some of the loot that we picked up from the bastion happened to be an armor template which meant we have another pattern to then put onto an armor piece because we need one template per armor piece to actually put a design onto now this one is called like the snout something something i don't really know but we ended up you know making a chest plate a netherite chest plate at that so i ended up using that template right on my netherite chest plate and i think oweka did as well we were definitely gonna need more netherite if we wanted to see a full netherite set with these armor trimmings so we had to step up our game i ended up going down to the river getting some water so i could get an infinite water source and then ended up creating ourselves a wheat farm right next to the house and fenced it up with
with some pink fences. Days 40 to 50. At this time, Oweka had already logged off of the server, so it was just me at this moment. And I didn't really know what else to do because I didn't want to make too much progress without him. So I ended up making a cherry blossom tree house. My thought process was this. We didn't have enough cherry blossoms around the place, so I ended up getting a bunch of saplings. I then placed the saplings around the house because I was very indecisive on where to actually place this tree house. By the time I actually placed all of them, they ended up growing up after I went AFK for a bit and then ended up deciding where I wanted the tree house to be. Kind of. What I ended up doing is after getting a bunch more cherry logs to actually make this build, I ended up making a staircase to what's supposed to be the third floor, but is then connected to this shrine that I made, made out of Sakura blocks as well. I also put a bit of glowstone at the top of it to make it look really nice. Another item they ended up adding is hanging signs, and that's also another thing I wanted to do. Even though it was a little bit costly and it was gonna cost her iron, which I don't think Oweka will really like. You know what? He has his own chest and he has his own stuff, so honestly, we don't need to worry about it too much. Let's just get to work. And by the end of it, the treehouse ended up looking like this. I also added a bunch of fences, so you know, when you're running up there, it doesn't actually drop you off, and it had a bit of a design to it. I honestly really like it. Another thing that I think I forgot to mention is I found out what to do with those pot shards that we got from some of the suspicious sand that we found at that temple. The use of it is to make ourselves a pot, and a pot with some designs on it. And honestly, in my opinion, I thought it was really nice. It added a little bit of decoration that you can put around the house, but I may have overdone it just a tad bit because there were just pots everywhere, even if it didn't make too much sense. You know what? That doesn't even matter, okay? Because it looks pretty. I wanted to refocus on the main task at hand, and that's simply just to get more netherite, so I could honestly work on that a bit before Oweka hops on. So I begin my sheep farm. I went out and found ourselves some sheep, and I had to bring them all the way back to our house. That's also another reason I made the wheat farm, so we actually had the wheat for it. But after all of that, we brought them back to the house, and I ended up not having a pen for them, so I stuck them in a very sanitary hole. Is this a good idea? I don't know. Honestly, I'm very scared of them entity cramming when I start breeding them, but that's okay. But not before long, Oweka ended up coming back from school, and he joined up on the server. So I showed him around. Days 50 to 60. There was not a lot of stuff that happened around this time. Honestly, me and Oweka were just talking and waiting for the sheep to actually grow. But the sheep farm now looks like this with a bunch of more sheep in them, and it's a little bit extended. Honestly, the sheep are in here living rent-free, so they shouldn't be complaining. And they get the two best neighbors in the world. Me and, and Oweka too, I guess. But after a bunch of us farming them for wool, we ended up getting a bunch of beds and going to the nether. We needed a way to get down all the way to Y level. I think it was 13 to 11. That's the one we decided to choose. We ran into a bit of a problem, and that's just simply put, we were on top of a huge lava lake. A lake doesn't really justifyingly explain this. It's more like a lava ocean, just stopping us from getting to those lower Y levels. So I decided to do something very risky for someone playing hardcore Minecraft. I ended up diving into the ocean of lava. But to be fair, in my defense, I did have myself a fire protection potion. My thoughts were, if I could get to the bottom of this lava ocean, I can then build around me all the way back up to us making basically a tube shape and if we block up the tube we end up being able to mine into it as if it was any other cave this is what i did but it also did kind of scare oweka a little bit and afterwards i showed oweka how to use the bed method to find ourselves some netherite and the grinding began took a few trips back and forth from the base and back to that area but in all honesty it was worth it because we got a bunch of netherite from it by that i mean ancient debris and i was too lazy to do the math at the time day 60 to 70. this time me and oweka weren't really talking much and we were just kind of grinding on our own time just to get ourselves a full set of netherite armor each and I also wanted some for a weapon and maybe even a pickaxe. So after all of this exploring was done I then headed back to the base of ours. So now I have a couple options. An interesting thing is the recipe for making these netherite ingots is actually a bit different and it requires us to have a netherite template which is really annoying and to make more of these it costs diamonds and I didn't have any more so I stole them from Oweka. I am such a nice friend. What I also ended up doing is placing ourselves an enchantment table so we can start enchanting our netherite armor that we have now crafted. And by we, I mean me, because Oweka was still in the mines. I also ended up putting an enchantment on my bow, which is infinity that Oweka ended up finding when he was exploring. And I put it on my bow, even though he was saving it for himself, I'm pretty sure. Oweka ends up getting back and puts his netherite armor on as well, alongside with enchants. The upside to mine is that my boots had feather falling, but I had a mixture of protection one and protection two, while Oweka had full protection two, which was honestly a W. But before we knew it, we actually ended up on a bit of a fatal mistake 
mistake and an error on our part. We didn't explore enough random structures because we didn't have any more templates to put onto our armor. So now we just have the basic netherite armor sets, which is lame. So we set out on an adventure to find a bunch more structures and get ourselves these things called sentry armor trims. My main goal was to find these things called pillager outposts, and we found a couple of them. We split up for this process so that we didn't end up getting two of the same things. After a while, both me and Oweka ended up finding the same one, which is literally what we tried avoiding, but it didn't work. But lo and behold, it was actually filled up with a bunch of pillagers out to get our heads. So we had to eliminate them. And we finally made it to the top. And our luck just went crazy because we ended up finding nothing. Absolutely no templates within this chest. So we had to split up. A70 to 80. So after doing a bit of research, I also found out that pillager outposts are a semi-rare structure generating every several 100 to a couple thousand blocks. So we had a lot of exploring to do. After a whole bunch of time, I finally ended up finding a pillager outpost. I completely ignored the masses of pillagers that were out to kill me, and I went straight up to the top to check out the chest. And lo and behold, we found ourselves our first sentry armor template. But we also ended up finding another one. And finally, at the very end, Oweka ended up reuniting with me because he got all four that he needed, and I only needed three in total, and I had two. So we ended up finding one last pillager outpost that I was hoping the thing would be in, and they had a bunch of these pillagers, and this is how it went. Finally, I've gotten myself the last sentry armor trim. I then went a little bit far away from them so they can't really sense us and ended up placing down the smithing table and we ended up trimming up our armor one last final time. Or so I thought at that moment. Phase 80 to 90. We went back to the base, got everything that we needed, which also includes the beds we needed to kill off the Ender Dragon. That's right, we needed a bunch of those. Then we began following the Eye of Enders. Eye of Enders ended up leading us over to a desert and we also found ourselves camels. Not the same ones that we had before, but different ones. But we ended up taking the saddles from the old camels that we abandoned. We also ended up sleeping there for the night because it was getting pretty late. Then we moved forward with the camels included. I'm gonna be honest with you, we are not very good camel owners because we were jumping off of cliffs and everything, okay? Oweka even got one of his camels to two hearts. Ended up ditching his camel so that he can just ride my camel and I'm just in the back. Crazy. After a bunch of exploration, we finally ended up finding ourselves nearby where I think the end portal was actually at. Then both me and Oweka decided to mine down in a singular hole for some reason. Oweka wanted to escape it, but I just kept mining down. And eventually we found ourselves to an opening which led us to a cave. We thought it was just some normal cave, but further inspection we found out that it actually led into the stronghold. Now the stronghold was placed a little bit weird because a lot of the areas were caved in. So we ended up reaching a lot of dead ends. I also ended up finding ourselves a library which had a chest at the top which gave us some pretty interesting loot. One of the more notable pieces of loot was the fact that they gave us an armor template for us to put on our armor. And it's different from the one we had last time. I ended up using one of them and Oweka ended up using the other and it overrid the old one we had. I think I like this one a lot better than the last one so I'm just gonna keep it on. It's funny how I say that but I literally don't have any option because I don't have any more templates but that's okay I guess. Continue to explore. I also end up finding myself some ender pearls within some of the chests while exploring and after a bunch of exploring we ended up missing a bit of a corner. We turn that corner and find ourselves at the end portal where I get jumped by a silverfish. Typical. Point we're kind of just mentally preparing for the fight but we should be good to go. I normally kill the ender dragon with just diamond armor and this time around we have netherite armor. So what am I really afraid of? He gave me some of the beds he had left over from the nether mining trip and I think I was all good to go is what I would have said if I was actually good to go but in reality I was nowhere close. See I kind of forgot to bring myself a bucket of water for clutches and this no simple thing to forget because I don't have any means to get back down if the dragon hits me except for ender pearls and I don't know why I didn't think about it but I could just farm endermen there. I didn't do that. In the moment, I don't know. I guess I was thinking of other things. Last, we ended up killing the ender dragon once and for all, but at what cost? My life. Subscribe if you don't want nightmares.